Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you so much for checking us out. As always, uh, you know the drill. If you're uh, liking what you see, if you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. Great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I got to tell you how excited I am to be talking with Simon from Bamba Estereo about a brand new record called Deja. How are you, sir? Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you for in, for inviting, for having us here in the show. Thanks. Yeah, man. It's um, First off, I love what you all do. It's been so exciting to hear your music throughout the years. This new one, it feels like another level for what you all are up to right now. And and I guess to lay it out a little bit, this is a, a four-part record, um, I guess four EP set out that we'll get to in a minute, but but it's something that you guys started recording before the pandemic. I, I would wonder though, did that did what's been going on in the last year affect um, what you all were talking about thematically and musically on here? Well, it, it, it was very very cu curious because yeah, we finished the album. Actually, we started making the music for the album, the music like the instrumentals in 2018 in we we're touring europe you know we were in the in the tour in the tour bus all over europe and you know when you're in the in tour buses you have, have a lot of a uh, lot of of time of free time to do stuff you no know? so you can either sleep or get drunk or make music <laughs> <laughs> so we decided to get to make music you no know, in the in Paths, paths between festival and festival. We started working with Jose, that is the Bombas guitar player. We started make, making tracks, just making tracks and everything. And then after that tour, everyone went home. And 2018, we we choose we chose that year to be like a. We said, okay, we're not going to tour so much in 2019 because in 2020 we're gonna go out and tour the whole world with the album and everything. So 2019 was also slow and with uh, very, very little shows for our, for us, like not, not too much shows. So we kept on working in the music, but everyone from home in 2019. And then in 2020, when we had like plenty of instrumental and everything, and Liliana, had already ideas for the for the music and everything. We decided to to gather to to finish the album, especially the the lyric part of the album, like the vocal and the more acoustic instruments and everything. And we went to where Liliana lives, that is in in the north of Colombia, in the Caribbean coast. And she lives almost in front of uh, this beautiful and amazing beach that is called El Parque Tayrona. And it has the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta behind that is this huge, enormous, beautiful mountain. And, and it's the only place in the, in the earth that, that you have snow so close to the Caribbean Sea. It's a very, very magical place. And we set up like a mobile studio there that this was January of 2020. And we all the band, we went there, all the band, and with Lido Pimienta, and with some uh, Cuban uh, singers that also live in Canada and came to, to do choruses for the album, and Lido's husband, that is a drum player, and we were Emi, Liliana, Apache, like everyone gathered together, and we finished the recording, like the last steps of the album. And all, always the idea of the album since 2018 or 2019 was more or less like an album that was about the end of the world and about this environmental crisis that, that we are living. And we had this idea in our minds and the show, it was, we, we were imagining a show that it was like tra a transition from the, this world that we live in dies and a new world arises and we had like all this concept and then the, the concept of the elements came okay we're, we're going to divide this album in in the nature elements and we're going to release it in four times and everything like in four in four moments and we finished like in february more or less and everyone went back home 
and boom, the pandemic came. <laughs> and it was like, oh, God. Uh, fortunately, we, we finished the album together. Otherwise, we couldn't have finished it in distance, you know, because the album was meant to be finished all together. And then all the ideas that we had for the album became even, even more, more, more powerful and more urgent to say because the 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 pandemic like put it like more evidence in our in our in front of us no yeah so yeah, the concept the, uh, become stronger became stronger yeah, yeah. when I, I remember when we were in the middle of it you know probably summer uh, early fall and we started hearing about all of these cities where the um the fog had lifted and the smoke and the pollution had lifted and basically just gone away and how different that was. And, and you thought, you know, it, it is weird to say, but if there was one silver lining that came out of it at the moment, you know, that it was cleaning the earth a little bit, you know, keeping us from traveling. But even before then, I had noticed that a lot of artists um, that I was talking to, that was on their mind, you know, environmental catastrophe, nature, that concentration was on your mind. Why was that so important for you all to talk about? Well, I think, yeah, it's something that has been happening many years ago, no? But with the pandemic, it became more evident, no? That the, the harm that we are doing to the earth became more evident because we stopped, no? We stopped the rhythm and the earth, like, took a, a, a new breath, no, and the animals and everything. And I think in our case, that we live in Colombia, that is a really, really strong natural uh, country, but it has lots of problems as well. But in general, when you're, when you make music or when, when you are like in the artistic fields, you develop some kind of sensitivity, sensitivity and connection with the with with things things that are like very subtle subtle things in nature and i think music is really connected with nature the rhythm and the and harmony and melody are elements that come from nature so when you grow up as a musician everything you oh, in in my case for example a uh, it's every time is more harder, like the connection I feel with nature and the, and especially in, 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 in musical terms, in musical terms. And you see that everything that we know comes from there and the rhythm is comes from nature and the melodies come from the birds and the, you know, sound comes from nature. So, so you kind of begin to respect it, respect that in, in a different level and connect more with, with those elements. Yeah. And you, you, so you all, as you were saying, you broke the record up into the four elements, earth, wind, earth, wind fire, earth, water. Wind, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to go through them. Did, were you all able to theme the songs that came out of that specifically towards those elements? Like, do those elements say anything specifically in the four parts? No, it's, well, some of the of the songs are like directly speaking about that, but the others is not an album about the elements. Mm -hmm. We the general concept is an album about connection and connection and disconnection with nature. It's like the the, the general concept. But then the songs, uh, besides one or two or three that are directly speaking about the elements, for example, that song Agua that was the first that we released. Is about water. Mm -hmm. Is agua is water in Spanish, and two or three more. The others is more a kind of a conceptual link that we did. Okay, with the energy of the songs, no. So the songs that are more like connected to dance and to and to like more ground grounded with the earth are in the elements uh, earth. Uh, the ones that are like more about love are in the elements of uh, fire, you know, and, and we did like this conceptual connections, but I think the important thing is the, the general concept of the album. Mm. 
um, with Fire with Fuego. I mean, that's something that you all had visited before. You've got a very popular song. I, I'd wondered if if there was a chance for a callback to that song at all with this, you know, new one. Well, I think, and and it's it's really really uh, special because uh, the, the songs that we have in Fuego now are like the more like more or less the more old school sound bomba sounds with songs like really connected with the folk music of Colombia with the cumbia and the percussion playing that I we link directly with fire. No, you 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 feel like the African percussion and everything for me is like like fire, no? So so yeah, it's not not like a, like kind of the fuego song, but in 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 in, in that style of music. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's of course a classic. I you know love what you all. Are. I'm I'm excited to hear that section of this record too. You know, um, <laughs> and and I should bring up yeah. Deja because we're playing that one at FPK, and it, it's instantly one of my favorite songs of the year. I mean, it's so much fun. I cannot get enough of that song right now. And it, it's important, I think, that we bring up the message on this because you know we're talking about some pretty dire. Um, events happening in the world within this record. We're talking about, you know, that dis human disconnection that you're talking about. We're talking about nature. And on Deja, um, you know, it, there, this it comes across to me anyway as a song about loneliness and isolation, but it's also sort of an empowerment, like you've got to get up and get moving. What's, what's going on with that, with that song? Yeah, it's, it's Liliana wrote it, and it's, it's, about, it's a song about depression. And about loneliness, and um, because she and, and Lido, they wrote it together. They both pass uh, through very very difficult situations around depression, around people around them with he really heavy heavy depression. So, yeah, it's it's about that. But as you said, like trying to because when you're depressed your energy is always like putting you down and down and everything that you see is negative and is negative it's kind of what ha what's happening in the world today not so much as with when trump was president you were even more depressing right <laughs> today is a little bit more or less depressing but it's negative and negative energy and negative energy so the song is about uh, stop doing stop doing that and like go out of that and just go and swim in the seawater and let everything go, and you're gonna feel okay again. You know, it's kind of an empowerment of going out out of that zone, of that zone that is surrounded by negativity all the time. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, there are songs that have been written that obviously weren't about the moment that we're in that have been perfectly timed out. And I really think that that's one of them. And the, just the obvious parts of the isolation and loneliness, you know, that I think a lot of people have felt in the past year. Um, you know, even though, uh, of course, I didn't know what all the words meant when I heard it, you know, that, that, that sound just felt great on top of everything. So. No yeah, and the, and the translation is because Deja, uh, the translation is like leave, like leave behind. Mm -hmm. It's kind of leave behind all the all the weights that you carry. You know? Because when you're depressed, it's like you have lots of weights in in your shoulders. It's like just leave behind that and let it go and just dive in the in the water and and be free. Yeah, that's an important message. Um, we've talked about it a little bit, but musically, where did you want to take this? Because community does become a big part of the story of this record, right? Yeah, it's. I feel it's a record of multiple persons and minds and energy and hearts into the record because it's not only, you know, because Bomba Steady is as associated only with me and Liliana, but with this record, I feel that we... We did it again as a band, and and we ha haven't done that for a, for a few years, no. Because previous records were like me and Liliana, with a producer in in LA and everything. But this this was like okay, we want to make this with with the band, and then we worked a lot and a lot with Jose, the guitar player, that is an amazing musician, 
one of the best that I've worked in my life. He, amazing guitar player, an amazing uh, writer and composer. And Pacho, who plays the drums and brings all this folk music uh, from Colombia, like all this cumbia and carnaval music. And Lido, Liliana, for the first time, worked with another singer, like writing and doing the melody that, that is Lido Pimienta. And Lido brought these two girls from Cuba that are also amazing players. One of them plays the violin and they sing and play per percussion also. So all the songs, what everyone was like, okay, I want to do this here. I want to do this. That. And we're like, go, go, go. <laughs> So it was like energy summing, energy summing, and you kind of feel it. It's, it's, it's kind of an eclectic album. You have like lots of different influences, and and for me it's very beautiful. And and having the opportunity to to do it together, not in distance, like you know, making a, an album in Zoom, but together in an amazing place before the pandemic, like close the energy to make it like a a, a great and, and beautiful album. Yeah, I think that's really important. The, the multicultural uh, aspect of this. I, I say that especially as someone in America who for the past four years have had to deal with the word walls, you know, yeah. and, and, and we had this really horrible person that was trying to shut anyone that didn't look like me out of the country. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's really refreshing to hear yourself, other artists talking about wanting to do, you know, um, I mean, I guess that was part of the importance, it sounds like, to go along with it, that it wasn't just the people around you, that it was people all around the world. Yeah, yeah, and I think, and music, for me, the most interesting music is, is when you feel kind of that diversity, you know, you, you listen, and it's not only, okay, this is this genre, but this has like African influence, but electronic, but Latin, but I don't know, a Europe or white influence is like a merge. And for me, the most interesting music is today is that one. Otherwise, a little bit boring and it's a bit a little bit radical. Just try to do one style, you know, and it, and it becomes like a little bit boring to hear the same music and the same beat. And, you know, but when it has different influences from all, all over all over the place and around the music that we like makes it uh, very interesting and very open in a world that's trying to put walls no because now the world is in the in in the middle of okay we're going to close everything with walls or we're going to be together again no right it, it, and it's interesting timing too because here in America you know may, maybe uh you know, maybe it's the opposition, the cultural opposition, even without having to think about it subconsciously. But in America, we are seeing um, the biggest wave of, of Spanish and Latin speaking music, uh, you know, on the top of our charts and everything, which happens every now and then. But I feel like this is the biggest wave that's ever happened. Are you all feeling that from your end? I mean, is are you all sensing that, that that's happening in America, too? Yeah, for sure, for sure, it's happening. You know, it's happening with reggaeton, no? That is one of the good things that I found about that music because, in some other ways, I'm I'm not, I do not agree with some things that happen with that type of music. But I think it's great that Spanish music, and obviously uh, the United States is it's is full of Latin people, no? So, mm -hmm. so that's obvious for it to happen but for me it's amazing because back in the time we were, we were in a situation that if you don't do music in english uh, even if you use your spanish speaker you have to do music in english to cross the market yeah. i think today that that is something for the past no you do, you don't have to do you do music in the in the in the tongue that you speak you don't have to do music in english to cross the market and for me, that's amazing because otherwise happened the opposite, no? Here we listen to music in English and we're not telling you guys, hey, you have to sing Spanish to, no, to come to Colombia. So it's kind of a leveling mm -hmm. a bit the equation that for me is really interesting and unfair, unfair for, for artists in, in Latin America. 
Yeah, that it's always been absurd. Even even in English speaking music, you know, if you came from British, you had to sing with an American accent, and then the yeah, '90s yeah, yeah. changed that with you know Blur and Britpop, and yeah, they yeah. were like, you know, who made these rules? Because obviously, yeah, it's absurd. You, you just want a good song. I want a good song. There's never a moment where I turn on one of your all songs and I think, oh, I wish this were in English. I don't care. It's a great song, you know. Yeah, and you connect with the music, and if you're very curious, you just put the lyric in Google, and it translates, and that's it. <laughs> Which I did for this interview a few times, you know, just to make sure <laughs> I did what I needed to do. Uh, Simon, I, I really, I love what you all do. This, this new record right here is so good. Thank you all so much for continuing to do what you do and, and for taking the time to talk about it to do. This has been really cool. No, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure, and thanks for inviting and having the music. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, we'll see you around when that happens for everybody. Uh, I can't wait to see this big concept live that you're talking about. I have to see, you know, I have to see what what's going to happen with the with the shows. Maybe that big concept and is in video and, and scenery and everything. Maybe it's going to be a little bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we'll be having fun with the music. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.